In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a handy back to top button that works on the desktop, on the tablet, and on the mobile. And all of that with Elementor Pro. So first of all, let's take a look at what we're going to build. So as you can see, as I start scrolling at the bottom right corner, the back to top button appeared. If I scroll back up, it disappears. So I can go all the way to the bottom of the page click on the button and it brings me back to top, which is why you would expect it from a back to top button. It goes the same way on the tablet. So I click and go back up and same thing for the mobile. So let's scroll and let's go back up. Now, if you're wondering what this website is all about, it actually comes from a previous tutorial where I taught you how to create a beautiful blurry background navigation and also a sticky navigation so what do you need to complete this project? Well, apart from WordPress, of course, and a WordPress theme, you would need Elementor. Now for the WordPress theme, I recommend Astra. And you can use the free version of Astra for this tutorial. So as I said, you'd need Elementor and more precisely Elementor Pro because I'm going to use the custom footer feature from Elementor Pro. Now Elementor Pro starts at $49 per year for one website, $99 per year for three websites and $199 for 1000 websites which in my opinion is the best deal. Now they've changed the way they present the pricing. So now they show it per month, but it's the same pricing. If you want to purchase Elementor Pro, I've put a handy link in the description below. Now this is an affiliate link, which means that I do get a commission if you purchase after clicking on one of my links, but I only recommend Elementor Pro because I absolutely love this tool and use it each and every day. And also the commission actually helped me keep on creating free content on this channel. So this is what we have. So as I start scrolling, you can see the back to top button at the bottom right corner. And let me show you at the very bottom of the page, we have a custom footer and this is where the magic happens. Now, if we go to the current version where we haven't done anything yet, if I scroll all the way down, first of all, there's no back to top button and that's logical. We haven't done anything yet, but the footer is the default footer from the WordPress theme. And in my case, it's the Astra theme and we'll need to change that and you'll understand in a moment. So in WordPress, go to templates, theme builder, and we're going to create a custom footer. So click on add new, select footer, and I'm going to call it my footer. Click on create template. Okay. So you can either use one of the templates, but I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to close this. I'm just going to click on the plus sign and I'm going to create a section with three columns. Now within the columns, you can style it the way you want. It doesn't really matter. And just to make this tutorial a little bit faster, I'm just going to apply some styles and some elements that I've previously done. So this is the final footer. And once again, it doesn't really matter how it looks. What matters is what we're going to do now. So first of all, I need to add an icon widget. So I'm just going to drag an icon widget here in the footer. And first of all, I'm going to change the icon. So I'm just going to type down and I'm going to select an icon. This one will do. Next, I want to change, I mean, I want to add a link. So the pound sign and then my top div. Okay, remember that, my top div. Okay, next, I want to go to style and then the primary color is going to be white. The size is going to be 30. Okay, next I want to go to advanced and I'm going to give it a padding. So I'm just going to unlink the padding values and I'm going to give it six on the top, 10 on the right, six at the bottom and 10 on the left hand side. Okay, uh, next I want to go to background, select classic and pick any color that you want. So I'm just going to select, select that red color here. Okay. Next, I want to go to positioning for the width. I'm going to use inline. So now as you can see, when I chose inline, it's just around the, the icon. So the surface of the icon is just around the icon. If I put it back into default, it takes the whole width of the column of the container. So let me put that back in line auto. Okay. 
and for the position i want to keep it fixed so where is it going now it's going right uh, there at the top left corner here right here so we're going to fix that so first of all the uh, horizontal orientation we want to select right so now it's on the right hand side and i'm going to keep it 30 pixels from the right hand side and then where, where it says vertical orientation i'm going to select the bottom and once again i'm going to put 30 pixels from the bottom so now as you can see it's looking good okay next let's select our tablet mode and in the tablet mode we're just going to keep it like this because it looks fine now let's move on to the mobile mode and here it's going to be a little bit different i'm slightly going to change it so for the uh, horizontal i'm going to choose 20 pixels and for the vertical 20 pixels again so now it's red on red you can't really see it but you see in a moment okay next we want to add some transparency because right now it's going to appear like that as soon as the page loads we don't want that so for that let's go to motion effects scrolling effects and let's click on transparency okay uh, we want fade in for the direction the level is going to be 10 and when it comes to the viewport we want to go from 0 to 5 percent and you won't really see it here the only thing is that now it looks like it's transparent because you've just changed those settings but you can't really see how it behaves so you'll see in a moment let me publish so where do you want to display your template it's our custom footer so we want to add it on the whole website so click on add condition and by default it says by default it says entire site which is what we want so i'm going to save and close okay and now we need to go to the front end to see how it looks okay so back to the front end as you can see i haven't refreshed the page yet this is still the old um footer from the astra theme i'm just going to hit refresh okay and let's start scrolling and as you can see our back to top button appears once again so it seems to be working let's go at the bottom and you can see we have our footer here but will it work so let's go back to the initial demo when i click it's all smooth but now if i come back to what we've just built so let's try let's start scrolling down and as you can see the back to top button appears but if i click on it nothing happens and that's for very good reason if you recall in the footer on the icon we added the link to the div my top div so we need to reference that somewhere so let's go back to the wordpress dashboard so i'm going to visit my home page so make sure you create a page that's long enough so that you can actually test the feature next i'm going to edit with elementor okay so i want to select my top section which is this one here called hero in my case so with my section selected i'm going to go to advanced and where it says CSS ID, I'm actually going to change this for my top div, which is exactly uh, the same name we gave to the link in the footer. Let me click on update. But before we uh, go to the front end, make sure you don't put the pound sign before. We just want to give it the name. So just my top div. Okay, so let's refresh. And now when I scroll down, I still have my back to the top button. And when I click, it works fine. Now I've just realized that instead of a back to the top, I've put a down arrow. So that's really easy to fix. Let's go back to uh, Elementor. And now we need to select our icon here at the bottom. Go back to the content tab. And I'm just going to type up. And there you go. It's now repaired if i go back and refresh now it's the correct one now if you want that back to top button to be present on all the pages on your website make sure that on each page the first section has the same id and in our example it was my top div so it's not ideal but that's the way you need to do it if you want it to work on each and every page okay so let's take a look at our tablet version I start scrolling and it works fine and now the mobile version let me start scrolling 
and it's working fine. So I hope that you got value out of this video. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up as it really helps growing this channel. I can't tell you how much, so I would really appreciate it. Now, if you're not yet subscribed to the channel and you want more tutorials like this, and in general, just more digital alchemy goodness, make sure you subscribe and smash the notification bell so that you don't miss anything. So that's it for this video. I hope to see you in the next one. And in the meantime, don't forget to invest in your success.